All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching there in the future for something a little different here with this video. We're going to be playing some best of one on Arena. Uh, it's, a, you know, it's a popular format, easy format to get into. So no sideboarding. We just play one game, see if we win or lose. That's going to be about it. So we're trying out mono white aggro um, as our uh, weapon of choice here. Um, Definitely or just a really strong deck. It's straightforward, playing some creatures um, and attacking and, you know, hope, hoping they get it done. We don't have a whole lot of interaction for the opponent, just some Conclave Tribunals chilling over here. But for the most part, we just have lots of one drops, um, a couple two drops with Tithe Taker being the new card really from Ravnica Allegiance here that um, is honestly pretty good. I've been pretty happy with this one. Um, and then... Uh, Finish out with some big, big effects to make our creatures bigger with Benelish Marshall and Venerade Luxidon. Same with Unbreakable Formation. If we cast this during our main phase. And of course, History is just an awesome card. So well, these are going to be some quick games here. We're going to be playing a few of them. And uh, let's see how it goes. Let's get some best of one. So I'm going to play ranked for best of one. Um, so there we go. All right, so we think we're going to be playing a Smothering Tithe Emergency Powers deck after this. And then Bant Tokens after that. I think that's what our new schedule is going to look like. Oh yeah, there's there's a best of one queue, isn't there? I guess we could be doing the best of one queue. All right, so Snubhorn doesn't attack immediately because uh, you know it's zero power, so we want to be waiting on that. Legion's landing doesn't necessarily have to be the the first one drop to play. Our hand isn't too strong here. We don't have, like, you know, any of our powerful stuff. So we're looking to draw History Benalia, Venerate Luxidon, um, Benelish Marshall, all that kind of stuff. Adanto Vanguard uh, would be an amazing draw as well. Perfect. Perfect card to draw. All right, we just got to hope our opponent doesn't have any moment cravings or cry at the carnarium or anything like that. <laughs> I'll get Greenham in. I don't mind playing some janky decks. We need 10 permanents for snub. So we have seven right now. We're a ways away. And our opponent having something to, de to deal with that at Danto Vanguard. Uh, certainly really bad for us. All right, History Benalia, where are you at? Any permanent next turn would turn on Snubhorn Sentry. I can no longer stand by and hold that. I'm actually thought. pretty surprised they they ticked up Teferi. Um, I mean, I guess they minus their Teferi is definitely dying. No removal spell either. That's pretty big. Like, us flipping Legion's Landing is certainly what we needed to do here. Legion's Landing is really, really great against the control coming. decks. 
correct. Even if Snubhorn was a 0-3, we, we could have still just attacked with the three creatures to flip Adanto. Uh, but us drawing the History Banalia allows us to... to flip, to uh, kill Teferi as well. All right, so Sell the Wreckage is certainly a card that I guess I should probably respect. What kind of attacks do I want to make against Sell the Wreckage? Do I want to leave the this knight back? I guess so. You would just go all in? I think we're okay. So, Adanto is, is really valuable just to continue to, to uh, activate Adanto on end step. Uh, so we don't need to play the history, because if we play the history we can't activate the Adanto, because it costs 4 mana. With having with having Adanto the first fort flipped, I think we can really be pretty pretty patient there, and not not allow our cards to do just a ton. Hey, thanks for the bits there, Leonidas. Gun. Strong draw. We did draw very well that game. We got that Adanto Vanguard right on time, and then the histories. All right, so there. I guess there is an event here, is it there? Let's go back. Let's go and do our event. Yeah. There we go. Let's do this thing. All right, where are you at, Mono White? There you go. The event is probably going to have even more red um, than otherwise, because people wanting to play a lot of events quickly, maybe. I think Mono Red is like the the match we want to see the least, probably. Probably. Um, so Healer's Hawk gets to attack in the air. It's it's definitely not Snub, because it's a 0-3, so we're thinking of these two. Um, Hunted Witness is better against removal. Healer's Hawk attacks in the air. Let's go and just go with the Healer's Hawk. <clears throat> Mono Blue is a really good matchup for us. That's what we we do like playing against mono blue uh, with mono white. So Shivan fire is a little weird. Having Shivan fire makes me think that they are not just a uh, mono. Mono red aggro, that this is something more like Drake's. Um, or like a controlish type deck. And so against the control deck, I want to get a Danto Vanguard uh, in play as early as possible. Now the list isn't isn't hers, but Tithe Taker is a, a just a strong card. It really is. It's a good card. Alright, so it is mono red. So so much for that. Um So we have seven permanents on the battlefield right now. I want to triple spell and turn on these snubs. And I want to just do that before before combat in case our opponent like has like a, a shock or something like that. Like if something happens here. You don't usually want to save a Dante Vanguard against Burn. But there are, are times, if you're ahead, um, it's not bad. Like, here I am certainly saving it here. Um, but you don't always want to. So, if, if our opponent has a Chain Whirler... <clears throat> I think I just save it again. If our opponent has a Chain Whirler. Because these are going to be... Next turn, these are going to be 4-3s because of the history. And then whenever we play this, they're going to be 5-4s. So, like, all of these are going to be able to attack well. Yeah, if our opponent taps out for Chain Whirler... They are taking lethal, so. Uh, 
Our opponent needs a burn spell for the Benelish Marshal, but even then... Yeah, no, even then they're just dead. I guess I haven't up updated our record over here. We're... Uh, I guess... I guess it's just 1-0 in the league now. Well, we're 2-0 overall. May do a little more than just the league, because these things go quickly. I don't know, maybe refresh after wizard? I don't know. Alright, another keep. So Dauntless Bodyguard is like a really good card to play on turn one because of the two power. So you get to attack for more um for more earlier. But it's also a really good card to to have later that you can play to be able to save a Benelish Marshal. So right now I'm not so like it's it's certainly good to have four mana and be able to play Benelish Marshal, like on turn four, play Benelish Marshal plus bodyguard to protect Marshal. But I'm not looking like I'm going to have four mana anytime soon with just the two lands in hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the 2-1 out uh, from the beginning. Oh, right. It's not Azorius aggro. Sorry. We are, we are thinking of playing Azorius, but we're playing Mono White. What is going on here? What is this? Were we not playing fast enough? Are there just too many people on Arena these days? Yesterday and today, Arena's been acting up. Oh, it's the opponent's turn? That's a tilt. We didn't even get to play a land. Or, I mean, we, we, sorry, we got to play a land, sorry, but we didn't get to play a spell. That's what I meant to say. Um. So, Watery Grave. Play the Tight Taker? I'm just gonna play the Tight Taker. So playing against Sultai, Sultai doesn't have a ton of removal spells uh, on turn two. They certainly have some. You know, like cast down is like the main thing. Like usually they play like two cast downs and like maybe one trophy. So I'm gonna try to have try to be able to untap with Benelish Marshall. Oh right, they have four mana because the land war elf. I'm just dumb. Never mind, this is just not worth it. Four mana, they have all this stuff. I was, I was hoping to be able to play it and untap and have Bodyguard next turn to be able to protect Marshall, but I should have just played some one-drops. This certainly would have been easier if we would have just played Bodyguard on turn two. Uh, our opponent would have already taken four more damage. They'd be at 13 right now, and we'd have a Bodyguard in play. Our life would be a little easier. Yeah, most people are playing Hostage Shaker these days instead of Chupa. Chupa Loops. So they're not at 13, they're at 17. A little worse for us. But I get to protect Benelish Marshall with Bodyguard. A little bit of a tra trade-off there. I think I would have preferred them to be at 13. Alright, 
next turn we're going to be attacking. It doesn't get better for us from here. It's possible our opponent may play Thought Erasure. Just have this planes here. So if we would have been able to deal the four damage earlier, they would be they would have been dead. If we'd have had our two one on the battlefield earlier. Yeah, you know, would have just not attacked the Benelish Marshal. I mean, they would have just blocked something else, so like they wouldn't actually be dead, but still, dead-ish. This is mono white. We are playing mono white. Yeah, we'd have the same number of creatures in there at one. If I just let that go, and we have Hunted Witness and Tithe Taker that kind of replace themselves. Hmm. So, yeah, it looks like a bad decision to... Bad decision on my part to not let that go. So Zagana gives any of their creatures with the counter on it trample. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. You win. You got me. Yep. Yeah, we could have had them down to one. Been a lot better for us. Of course, having, having the one drop in play earlier would have been a lot better also. Or us. Not drawing any more lands. No, I'm not playing any modern these days, Margo. Um, I didn't live through hell to lose to you. Feel the wrath of Scala. What can we draw? Let's see. What do we get? I think it's not so bad. As far as cards are concerned, it's a lot better than another basic planes. So I think if we actually had a, the I think the biggest, you know, my shield. I had the decision there with the finality just to to go to to have them go to one. That was probably just the wrong decision by me. Certainly would have been a lot easier though if we got to actually play a one drop on turn one. All right, our opponent's giving us an out. They're giving us an out. Oh, no, 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 I need to block with this thing too, don't I? Oh, no, no, we're good, right? No, we're not good. Dang, I need to block with both. That's exactly zero. No, I did take the out. Uh, I forgot about the trample with the Zagana until after I hit okay on the blocker. I forgot about the trample because of Zagana. I just was already checked out of the game. And then I was excited. Uh, I needed to double block. So if we would have drawn Benelish Marshal or Unbreakable Formation uh, from that point, we could have won if I just double block. All right. Need to slow down a little bit. Played that kind of fast. Unlikely to happen, but we, w we had a chance. But we had a chance. All right, let's see if we get to play... One drop this time. Zagana's okay. I wouldn't... It's not like a, a bad card or anything. It's just there's a lot of really good cards you can be playing uh, for four mana that it doesn't usually make the cut. I think when best of three, it's better to be playing another color besides just mono white because your sideboard options 
are a lot better when you uh, start adding in more colors. Hmm. If I play snub and landing, we have like three creatures we can attack uh, with to be able to flip landing next turn, especially after playing Benelish Marshall. But that's... Uh, I don't think that is enough to ascend, though. That'd be three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. No, that would not be enough to ascend. I think we're going to wait a turn. Let's just get the Tithe Taker in play here. And Conclave Tribunal next turn. We can Next turn we can, like, landing plus Snubhorn plus Tribunal. Rakdos Burn was a lot of fun, though, real rank. Um, I'm probably going to play that deck again tomorrow. I had a lot of fun with that deck. And I didn't sideboard the best with it, with it being, like, first time playing it. Um, like, one of our losses was to Mono Red, and then I changed up how, to, how I sideboarded, and it worked a lot better the second time than we beat Mono Red. So I don't think I want a Tribunal right now. Kind of want to just Benelish Marshall and hit for five. And then next turn, we're probably we're probably going to be taking next turn off to be able to cast Landing and Snubhorn and Tribunal. Like assuming they play like whatever big creature, big green creature. They, they seem like they're just a, a big green creature kind of deck. So next turn we can kind of take next turn off like they hold back the 4-3 play some big creature hmm and then we we would play those and the tribunal and then the following turn formation so much for all that though opponent's getting aggressive good draw good draw So I need another permanent to t turn on the snub horns. See, that's a random big thing to tribunal. No, that's the random big thing to tribunal. I think it's trample. The heck is this, all this trample? Alright, one, two, I'm not going to block the Jade Light Ranger. This next turn. I'm just I would just block the Gigantosaurus with the lifelink token. I could just block it with Tithe Taker and get a flyer though also. Yeah, actually, let's keep the lifelinker cuz the lifelinker is going to be two power next turn. Get a flyer. I think this is... I think we got this. Your Shimano Black was real. Yeah, it's not really a Mono Black deck. Well, poor opponent. Cast the Plummet immediately after I gave the creatures indestructible. Whoops. That's 
That probably wasn't what they wanted to do. Wasn't the best timing. All right, we're back. So this deck's really, really explosive, um, but it it doesn't really play from behind very well. You have to get out to an early start for sure. Uh, is this gonna be like our our mulligan? Man, we had. It's not very. Often you see one land hands with this format. We're on the play with one land. I don't think we can keep that, unfortunately. On the draw, you can like, you know, maybe squint and try to try to think about it, but not on the not on the play. It's a lot better hand. Love having the history of Benalia to play on turn three. Uh, basically, always want to play history before Benelish Marshall for the most part. Um, you want to get this down early. And Bellish Marshall's also a knight. It gets pumped. Is this Merfolk? Merfolk? We're not great against red deck wins. The, the reason why we're not great against red deck wins is when they have, like, the card advantage stuff, like Experimental Frenzy. Um, stuff like that, because they can just you know, use their burn spells over and over against us. Kill all our things, and then have a lot more cards where we don't have that card advantage at all. Tithe Taker does help a little bit, even though it's not good against Chain Whirler. But a lot of things we have aren't too good against Chain Whirler. Alright, Marshall time. So Marshall will get the pump next turn, and pump all these things up right now. They kind of have to block. Ooh, never mind. Guess they don't have to. Ooh, mesmerizing Benthid. I like saying that that name, Mesmerizing Benthid. That's a, a fun card name to say. Lucas, thanks for that resub there for the second month in a row. Welcome back. That is sub number four on the day. One more, and we will be at crack packing time. Looks like it still says 81 for now. Okay. They have a lot of creatures to block. We have a lot of creatures to attack with. So let's see what happens. Not all of our creatures are lethal. The Tithe Taker is not lethal. So they can double block the Benelish Marshal and kill the Benelish Marshal and just not block the Tithe Taker. Um... The Tithe Taker on the battlefield plus the one in our hand. If they just go to one, though, it it's going to really challenge them because you know next turn they have to block Tithe Taker and the Afterlife 1 token will make a 1-1 one, one flyer uh, that can most likely finish this off. Hmm. So they just went straight chomps across the board. Yeah, this, this list is tuned for best of one, yeah. The 60 that I'm playing right now. All right, four and one. That was a good mulligan for us. Really good good curve on a good, good mulligan. So that's kind of all we're doing is just curving out. Like, these games... We're not taking long. All right, so we're on the draw now. Hmm. So we have two draws to a second land. If we if we get a second land on turn two, we have one drop and then double one drop, and then turn three either we have Marshall or we can just we can venerate Luxon already on turn three.
I don't know how much a full play set of cards on Arena would cost. I would get, I mean, just guessing, I would guess uh, probably around $1,200. That'd be my guess. Yeah, I'm leaning Mulligan. Getting all the mythics is, is like what would be really difficult. That'd be the main thing that'd be difficult. Alright, this hand's pretty bad. We have lands and two top end cards. We have nothing no nothing in the middle. I think I'm still gonna keep it though. Five cards is kinda hard to win. All right, there we go. That's a glue piece. We need a lot more glue pieces. That's what we just got to have to find. So yeah, I guess probably yeah, three hundred dollars for each set is probably a good. That's actually a good. Uh, good guess. No, stop. Play you. Limited is certainly the best way to get all the cards for cheaper, absolutely. So do you think Mono White is better than Azorius, Aggro, or Boros for best of one? I think so. I don't... I'm not sold that it's worth the inconsistency and damage of the splash in best of one. I think that the other colors really help out sideboard-wise and everything. But when you're just playing the one game... I don't, I think you kind of have everything you need in just white, and you get to have your mana base be really, really good with just basic planes. You don't have to worry about, you know, like your cliff top retreats coming into play tapped or, you know, whatever. You know, if you just have like a hand of like double cliff top retreat, something like that, that'd be annoying. Uh, Deputy of Detention is the card people splash blue for. And then Counter Magic in the sideboard. But play Deputy instead of Conclave Tribunal. That was the card they absolutely needed. I guess I, I could have just held up Unbreakable Formation instead of play the Benelish Marshal, but... They were, you know, dead the next turn. Forced them to have it, I suppose. That's what this Unbreakable Formation is for. Four and two. Got Kaya's draft. That's pretty good for the opponent to have Kaya the current, or sorry, they had Golden Demise. They had Golden Demise into Kaya's draft. That's pretty good. If I just don't play the, uh, if I don't play the Banalish Marshal, I'm I'm just attacking for one the previous turn. Uh, I kind of like just playing the Banalish Marshal there. Alright, we're on the draw, so we get to see what our opponent's doing. Before we have to decide what's, what we want to do. Basic Island. Healer Talk's not the best against Mono Blue. And just kind of trades. If this is mono blue aggro, I'm just gonna get Hunter Witness in play instead. Does not look like mono blue aggro anymore. All right, third land. Where are you at?
Now our opponent was playing Esper Control with all like the dual lands and everything, so I'd assume they'd have an uncommon with Cry of the Carnarium. What are they shocking in there for? Just absorb? It only feels like absorb. Fortunately, I don't really want Luxodon or Tithe Taker countered. Especially Luxodon, how it taps all my creatures. I guess it's going to be Tithe Taker. No Absorb. Maybe Seal Away. No, Absorb is too blue. It's blue, blue, white. I will I gladly point out your inadequacies. Big creatures. If we draw another land, I don't think I'm going to play Benelish Marshall. I'm going to hold up Unbreakable Formation. Um, you know, they could certainly have Cleansing over here. I hope they don't, but... I can benefit from another success. I think that protecting from that for the future will probably be good. For future turns. Maybe not. Hmm. All right, yeah, it looks, certainly looks like a Wrath here. Hey, Eddie. But if they have the white mana. Ooh, that got my not usually card, no, that's not usually what you do before a Wrath. It's gonna be Settle. At least it's not Cleansing Nova. Settle, we can kind of play around. We don't have to attack with everything every turn. I wanted to save the Conclave Tribunal because they could be playing like a Lyra or something like that. Um, and in that case, you know, we have the Conclave Tribunal for an Angel. All right, land, please. At least that's two permanents for the snub horns. So that should be good enough. Now that we have ascended, they block 4-4 four, four snub horn. Take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They're at 9. 9 and 11. So what are our opponents calling? Kind of some quick games, you know? You just kind of play and see what happens. Mono White's good. I like it in the best of one here. All right. Um, I'd like to play against a slower deck with having this Adanto Vanguard in our hands. 
Uh, I don't really want to be playing against Mono Red with with our one drop, one drop here. Really, what I want is a third land. We'll see if we get the, the third land. Hallow Fountain. Nice, he got sent home from work. Uh, due to snow. There you go. Sit back and watch the stream. So it's Tithe Taker first, so if they have... If they do have... Um, if they have Seal Away, they won't be able to cast Seal Away now. You're just watching that work. There you go. That's that's metagaming. I'm getting paid to watch. Alright, so Kaya's Wrath. Likely our opponent could have Kaya's Wrath here this next turn. I guess I guess we still get to save a Danto's Vanguard though, so we'd still have like a hundred witness token and a Danto Vanguard. If I play Benelish Marshall. We're hitting in for um, two, four, six, ten. Then we would have four left afterwards. If they have Cry of the Carnarium, it's certainly worse, but we'd still have Benelish Marshall. I think having a Danto Vanguard means we get to just play the Benelish Marshall here, attack for a bunch. So we have. We have four, four uh, power on the battlefield now. Please no cry of the carnarium or golden demise. Don't have either of those. If they have Contempt on Vanguard, we still have three power, so we still kill them through Contempt. Um, they could have Moment of Craving plus... They got, like, double Moment of Craving, I suppose. All right. Good job, Adanto Vanguards. That's why we have a couple in the deck. Even though they're not good against um, other aggro decks, necessarily, there's still a good amount of control decks you face, and you want those Adanto Vanguards. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, five one. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to choose the token there for bodyguard instead of vanguard. Not really. Exa that's that was something I wasn't exactly sure. Hmm. This looks like the mulligan. Get that land out of here. Uh oh. Is it a mirror? <laughs> it says boy. Mono white aggro, boy. Yeah, we played we played a ranked match before this queue and we won that. Uh, this deck's pretty good at beating Mono Blue. Just against Mono Blue, you want to get down on the battlefield right away. All right, so if we go, if we go Benelish Marshall, we're attacking for more this turn. But if I, I think it's, I think we can just wait on Benelish Marshall, um, and go with all the one drops. Because if we go triple one drop, that's eight permanents. So we do actually just want to draw a land here, even though we don't, you know, wouldn't have anything to, to play. But land means, yeah, that's eight permanents. Land means we'd have ten, and then Snubhorns would be active. So 
So that's a knight as well. So that's going to get a lot bigger uh, next turn. Hmm. This history of Benalia is kind of rough. So I'm certainly attacking with the healer's hawks. If I attack with the snubs, they trade one snub for a conclave tribunal, but then they get two other tutus that are knights. And then both of those tutus get to attack me as four threes next turn. Um, and that's honestly kind of kind of a problem. I don't think that that's worth it, honestly. They can just wait a turn. I don't think giving them the two twos this turn is where you want to be. So this is kind of bad for us. Unbreakable formation. Yeah, this is kind of bad for us. Unbreakable formation would be really nice. We're not we're not looking so good here. Yeah, this turn, yeah, that's what I was planning on having Tithe Taker block a 4-3, but it looks like they have Conclave Tribunal also. Yeah, this was a, just a wonderful turn for them. Another history and a tribunal. So. Not so good. No. Do not want more land. Alright, that other land was okay. It turned out not to be necessary. This land we certainly don't need. Wow. Alright. Our opponent's rewriting history. Next turn, of course, these creatures are going to be a lot bigger with the third chapter. Yeah, we're just dead. We can't survive third chapter, third chapter, back to back. Alright, so we ended up five wins, five and three in the event. So what do we get for that? We get an extra 100 gold and a rare. 20 gems. Not so bad. Not so bad. All right, I think we can uh, we can play a couple more of these. Let's see. That's 6 and 3. Doesn't feel like we've been playing the deck for that long. Um I've been streaming for 2 hours 7 see it's 5:30 and I got two other decks to go. Should we do another event, or should we just play some ranked matches? Probably do one more event. Mono white, best of one. Let's try it again. See if we can get better than five wins. So... Ugh. As we see, whenever we're behind, it's not so good. We, we certainly want to be the deck that's starting out um, ahead right away. We've been getting a, a good amount of one-landers, which I don't love so much. That's been kind of a problem here recently. Really, deck? I mean, if this... Our opponent's keeping their seven... I mean, if we just draw land, land, if we were, like, really lucky to have land, land, um, we are going to win. You know, having this curve of snub into vanguard into history, history, marshal should just kill our opponent. So is it worth it to risk where if we don't draw land, land, we're going to lose? Or do we just go to five cards and try to win with a five-card hand? 
Remember, we're on the play, so we we don't get like that extra draw. So we really need our next card to be a land, and then the one after that. I think I'm kind of will willing just to try to draw a couple lands. Five's kind of hard to to win on. That's a terrible card. Doesn't give us any reassurance. Well, dang. That's not so good. I think I'm so glad that we tried this. Um, the Mono White Mirror, five cards is going to be pretty hard to win. These are certainly really good cards, the histories. But. Looks pretty over. Okay, there's the start. Can double history pull us out of this? So I'm going to be double blocking Legion War Boss. If that opportunity presents itself. Hmm. I'm just gonna make a two two every single turn. Our deck is like, no more lands. You wanted one more land? No, no more lands for you. So we're down to nine. I kind of, I probably have to just play Benelish Marshall next turn. Honestly, I, I don't think I have time to just sit here and wait for the histories. Unfortunately. The thing is that they just have burn spell for Benelish Marshall. That would look really bad for us. It seems like that's all they're sitting on our removal spells. <laughs> this is why you hate best of one. Yeah, I can understand that. All right, six and four overall. Been getting a lot of a lot of one landers the last like five six games, which. You wouldn't think it would happen nearly as much with how they the um, algorithm is for looking at two hands and giving you the better one of the two. Let's lead with the Healer's Hawk for the lifelink and the flying immediately. Oh really? That Boros list there? Hmm. Against Golgari, I think against Golgari, I want to have these creatures in play. I want to be able to flip this landing right away. So they just play like a a uh, like a Merfolk Branchwalker or something. All right, that's fine.
then we would have played the Benelish Marshal at that point, but no, let's not have the Benelish Marshal get cast downed. Let's get some more some more threats on the battlefield, especially this Vanguard. Vanguard's really good at attacking. Oh no, campaign. Okay, well this is not the kind of deck I was thinking it was gonna be. But the fact that they're playing campaign is probably good. It's probably good for this Adanto, the first fort, finishing this up. So this is um, only eight permanents. I'm gonna just keep the first fort. Um, I think it's just kind of better to use all the mana and have like the instant speed creatures. And then if we draw another spell next turn, we can we can double spell with like our, our two things, or if we draw a land, we can play the, the snub horn. Um, as well. So like, basically we got an extra 1-1. One, one. So what happened was, if I would have just played the Snubhorn, we would have been able to attack with two Snubhorns this last turn. We would have had one less 1-1. One, one. We just kind of got an extra 1-1. One, one. I don't know. Ritual of Sit was certainly a card that I was thinking that they could have as well. Uh, with being a disinformation campaign deck, I could see them having Ritual of Sit. And... So having the token end step would have been nice. All right, so our deck's a lot better when we hit three lands. When we hit our land drops, it's a lot better. Hmm. No one drop, but we are on the play. So Vanguard on turn two on the play is pretty good against a lot of things. One drop. What are you doing? Hey, control sloth. Um, is 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 a Drake's good in best of one? I don't I don't know. I wouldn't think so. Is a Drake's is not necessarily the best against the other aggro decks. I wouldn't think that's where you'd want to be. Yeah, we're playing homage to, to Greg Wesco here, yep. Is this mono blue aggro that's just not doing anything ever? Is it a control deck? What's going on? So I think I think our opponent probably has Merfolk Trickster. Play another one of these. Well, they can't cast Trickster anymore, so I don't know what they're don't know what they're doing over there. Yeah. Oh, they are. Is it? Fiery Cannonade. That's that. Hey, Stun's Ball. Nah, the, the Stormfleet Sprinter. So, haste unblockable? Well, I won't block it. Alright, does Unbreakable Formation kill them? Right now we have 8 power. Unbreakable adds 4 more. So, yeah, that looks like that's lethal. Play four turns. That's all we're doing. Mono blue is it pirates? All right, two and one this time. If we hit land drops, we're good. Yeah, Tithe Taker. I've been really happy with it. Just in the deck. Um, what are all these one-landers? I 
Man, I'd love to have a third history, but I gotta make sure we draw land. We're gonna need these double histories. So starting with Dauntless Bodyguard, because it can start attacking for two immediately. <laughs> nope, no Judiths. It's not Mono White Judith. Uh, yeah, you, so you need to win four to get your gold back. So, got to go four and three. Not so bad. I think these events are really good EV. I think if you're if you're trying to grind a collection with just um, with constructed, if you don't want to play limited whatsoever, I think this event's pretty good EV. Um, Grixis. So I'm I'm glad we put the the history to the bottom because you know. Otherwise, we wouldn't have like a, we wouldn't have the chance for the third land. We at least have a chance right now. But of course, I like myself. I like the best of three and sideboarding and all that kind of stuff. Solid deck for singleton event this weekend. Um, that's a good question. I haven't I haven't thought about it too much. I'm I'm certainly going to be playing it because yeah, I, I want to get the promo duresses. Um, that's certainly something that I want to get. But I don't know exactly what I want to put together yet. It's got to be harder to do three colors because oh my gosh. Fungal infection just wrecks me. Opponent just destroyed me. Um, all right, we finally got to the third land. Probably a little late by now. But yeah, that fungal infection destroyed me. Um, yeah, there you can you can win the uh, Urza Saga duresses by just playing and winning one game. They're free, uh, free to play. That's good. Cause that gets to empty our hand. So we get to get this attack in for two first. This is vigilance. And then uh, Luxidon, because Elder Shaborn is going to make us discard here, so we get to make sure our hand's empty for that, so that's good. Yeah, they said, they said they're the Saga Duresses. I saw that somewhere. That's, that's why... Yeah, they're definitely the Saga Duresses. I don't remember exactly where... That was. Um, and then if you win five, you get a Galta. But, you know, whatever. Galta. Alright, so if I make this attack with everything... Bad news is they just get their Nickel Bolas back. You know, like, they just trade with Nickel Bolas. And then they, they just get it back with Eldest Reborn. Um, if I don't make the attack... They get, what, a Danto Vanguard? Or Bodyguard? So I can deal nine to them. So I can sacrifice a knight to deal nine. And have them trade bodyguard up to Nicol Bolas. I guess we just have to attack. It's not what I want to do, though. I could certainly see them blocking... Yeah, I could certainly see that them blocking the Luxet on there, because... These things will be three threes. The good news, though, is we with because they blocked there, we do have lethal if they have nothing. If they have three lands in hand, we actually have lethal. So maybe they just have three lands in hand. You never know.
Maybe they have nothing with three lands in hand. More fungal infections. Well, this wasn't getting better for us, so. All right, we're only two and two in this event. Our opponents have come ready for us with these fungal infections and everything. But. Okay, we got two lands. Basically, as long as we have two lands, we can keep. Had too many one-landers, though, recently. What's the best card for Singleton? Uh, I don't know. That was just like kind of asking what's the best card overall, I suppose. Gates. Um, so, you know. I don't know, like Teferi or something. All right, so we're going to be playing the history here, and then uh, next turn I'll be holding up Unbreakable Formation for Gates of Blazes. Uh, hope our opponent doesn't Gates of Blaze this turn. I could, I could certainly see them waiting a turn anyway to get the other token from history. So I could certainly see them waiting a turn on the Ablaze. No, they did not. They may just have multiple. Multiple sweepers. Attack. So even if our opponent has another sweeper, we can keep our Danto Vanguard alive and then we get two tokens from the Hunted Witnesses. Opponent had turn three sweeper, turn four sweeper, turn five sweeper. And then they died. To a bunch of creatures. And they had one of their lands gained of three life. So that's why we got a Danto Vanguard in the deck. Danto Vanguard. Pretty nice. There's no fungal infections. Don't want to see that card. What are all these one-landers? Well, it's a spell. It's not a good spell. I could, like, ship it to the bottom and try to, try to dig towards the three drops. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I don't think Dauntless Bodyguard really moves the needle too much for winning or losing here. I think we, we want three drops. Okay, or I want Dauntless Bodyguard. Chill. Chill out, Bodyguard. You would keep the one land in three or four one drops on the draw. Hmm. 
Hey, two nails. So, good news is they only have two cards left. Yeah, the next deck has emergency powers, yeah. Yeah, you can change your art on basic lands. So I consider that a win. So our, our first Tithe Taker ate a Firebrand and a Shock. So we got two two cards for the Tithe Taker for the first one. That's pretty good. All right. Hmm. Chain Whirler is the huge problem, though. That was not a card I wanted them to see. Okay. Better. That's good. Let's get this Chain Whirler out here. So now we really want to be drawing History of Benalias. That is the card that is our best draw. Um, it's the only card we want to see. Chain Lord is the worst card for us to play against. Hmm. Alright, looks like we're going to be losing this one at 3 3. No, I, I don't think Ixalan's Binding would be better than Conclave. Um, I think it's just, it's not likely too much that we have uh, four mana to cast the Ixalan's Binding. I think there's going to be a lot of times where we just won't be able to cast it. Um, so I don't think we would want Ixalan's Binding. Kind of a tough mulligan for us. Opponent had a good hand. We got wrecked. But that's that's certainly the matchup that we don't really want to face, is our opponent drawing two Chain Whirlers. I don't think that our deck's going to win too often when our opponent draws two Chain Whirlers. Um, it'd certainly have to have... We'd have to have, like, Benelish Marshals and... Um, and Venerate Luxodons and things like that. Um, so the Unbreakable formations were okay. I think the biggest thing was like the the land situation. I really liked having the couple of vanguards, and I liked Tithe Taker. Um, Hunted Witness and Healer's Hawk were kind of whatever, but I guess they're the best one drops. I've always kind of liked Lean and Vanguard, even though it's not good against Chain Whirler, of course, but um, when you have like your multiple creatures, it does attack pretty hard. Hey, what's up, Celtic's Banner? Uh, there's also the Flyer. Uh, Sky Marcher Aspirant is another option. I'm not sure if either of those would be better than, than Hunted Witness, but maybe. Or Healer's Hawk. Healer's Hawk wasn't too impressive. Honestly, I'd probably rather have Aspirant than Healer's Hawk. Aspirant may, may honestly be better there. It's like, Healer's Hawk's the best whenever you get to pump it. But, I mean, we're, we're trying to ascend here. You know, we have Snubhorn Sentries. Like, ascending certainly something that we want to do. And then this thing's just a two-power flyer. So, and then if this thing gets pumped, it's just even better. Um, no, we're not playing Honor Guard in best of one. Playing Honor Guard doesn't work at all with Luxodon. And Luxodon is really good. So. No, I, I don't think a Johnny's Pride Mate is very good. I... I don't really like a, John, a Johnny's Pride Mate. Yeah, there's certain... So, 
there's certain you you have the ability to splash red for heroic reinforcements or blue for uh, deputy of detention. Um, that last game aside, we didn't struggle too much with our top end. Like if we play heroic reinforcements, we have to. Like I don't think we can play Benelish Marshall and History of Benalia and Ben Ray Luxadon and heroic reinforcements. Basically, I don't think you can have that that much top end. And I'm I'm not I don't think that heroic reinforcements is is better enough over history Marshall and Luxadon necessarily to to be splashing for it. I don't think I would cut. I don't think we need more mana. I don't know. Maybe we need a twenty first. I could see going with a twenty first land. The thing is, is we we don't we really don't want to draw like five lands ever. You know if we. If we do have too many lands, it's a huge problem for us. Tithe Takers were awesome. That card was was very good. Um, I think I like I think I like Aspirant over these other one drops though, especially Healer's Hawk. Um, and. Uh, Yeah, I think that's that's something I would change. Is just putting in Asper instead of Hawk. I'm definitely not cutting Luxodon. Luxodon's awesome. No, I, I don't think the deck gets better if you just put in Takali Honor Guards and um, Heroic Reinforcements. Like Honor Guard wasn't really like it's just not a good good aggressive card and. Um, in best of one, I just don't. I don't think you need that card. I think you would probably want like twenty-two lands if you're playing a Johnny. I think. I I certainly think that it's possible that I that there's like one or two of those one landers that I should have kept, especially like one lander on the draw. I think like especially one of the very last one landers I think could have been a keep, uh, like against like that mono red deck. I think we had a one lander that I could have kept. But yeah, I think I like this deck as far as best of one goes. So there we go. Yep, I can certainly send you this list. Or here, it's actually, it's right here. It's right there on Stream Decker, except for, um, I think I'd recommend Aspirant instead of Healer's Hawk. I think just like, Early, like even just like early on, having another two power creature on turn one is really important. I like it over Hundred Witness too. I'd actually just recommend just taking out the Healer's Hawks and one Hundred Witness, and putting in four Aspirants. Okay, you're on the phone. All right, well I'll send it to you later. My Discord's not opening on my computer right now for some reason. At least it wasn't a little bit ago, so I'll send it to you later. Okay, um, but so, so yeah, if you were watching this uh, later on, uh, um, uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and um, and there we go. Thanks. For